don't know about you, but I'm extremely inspired by the imagination of all of our presenters, and and I know they appreciate the the, um, the questions that they're receiving. Um, our next presenter is from the Philippines, Mark Ruiz from Happy Noi. Good afternoon. I'm Marco Quin Ruiz, co-founder and managing director of MicroVentures, a hybrid social enterprise that is behind the Happinoid program. I'm inviting you today to join our mission of bringing quality of life goods to five million poor Filipinos in a sustainable and scalable manner. Oh, the clicker. Okay. And this mission happens at the last mile. Now, the last mile has a different context in the Philippines as compared to Silicon Valley. For us, the last mile refers to reaching poor rural communities. Communities like this. I took this picture two years ago. And in this little shanty lives a family of five, household income of under $3 a day. They don't have access to safe drinking water. If somebody gets a fever, they have to walk several kilometers just to get paracetamol. And since there's no electricity, at night, there's only darkness. But they enjoy a luxury that everybody in this room enjoys. They've got Coca-Cola. Okay. And the reason that this 10 cent, 10 US cent Coca-Cola finds its way into this little shanty is through a Filipino ph phenomena called the Sari Sari store. Now, the Sari Sari store is the smallest unit of retail in the Philippines, selling around $10 per day. The name Sari Sari means various kinds, and it reflects in the store's merchandise. You find household items such as laundry, soap, noodles, sold in very small doses for daily consumption. Each Sari Sari store is run and owned by a mother. And she does it because she needs to augment her family's income. To date, there are 800,000 Sari Sari stores in every nook and cranny and village in the Philippines. And it is this channel that Coca-Cola is using to reach the poor. And so what we really want to do is this. So we've got our rural community, they've got the Coca-Cola, they're using the Sari Sari store as a channel. And to the left, really, is this quality of life good, say, over-the-counter medicine. And it can't seem to cross this divide. So what we're, you know, um, the way we approach this problem is to solve it using not new infrastructure. Why should we? It already exists. We're going to use the same infrastructure that Coca-Cola is using. We're going to aggregate and connect these Sari Sari stores. We're going to provide capital training, and distribution, and transform it into a branded network, creating a bridge to bring quality of life goods to poor communities. We call this initiative the Happy Noise Store Program, the store of the happy Filipino. That's true. Okay. So to make this happen, there are two critical components. First, we got to build a really great Happy Noise Store network. Second, we got to course the goods through this Happy Noise Star network. So let me talk about the first one first. As I said, we provide capital, and this comes from our microfinancing institution partner, CARD. They're the largest MFI in the Philippines, and they have 60% of the market. The distribution comes from MicroVentures Incorporated, the for-profit side of the social enterprise, while the training comes from the nonprofit, very focused on capacity building. You take all three inputs, and it goes into two kinds of Happy Noi stores. The first layer is a Happy Noi wholesaler, while the second is a Happy Noi retailer, the small Sari Sari store. This is how this progression happens. We actually start with a large Sari Sari store. We pick a mother, and she comes from CAR, the MFI. She's doing really well, and we filter for entrepreneurial drive. And we see, wow. She really wants to expand her store. 
And so we convert her into a wholesaler. At this point, she's doing $70 a day, not buying anything from us. We don't make any revenue from her. But we award her as a community store, or well, we call it uh, community store, the wholesaler. And her first milestone is within three months, she has to recruit 15 retailers, 15 Sari Sari stores, and convert them and bring them into the Happinoy network. At this point, she's doubled her sales. And at this point, she begins to buy from our distribution. In fact, 10% of her products will come from us. The rest of the inventory is still financed by card, but she's able to get already from existing sources. At the end of one year in the Happinoy program, our large Sari Sari store has now transformed into full out wholesaler with 50 Sari Sari stores under her, and she is now making around $60,000 in revenue per year. And Happinoy is distributing 20% of that with around $12,000 a year. We consider this mature one as one unit. And to date, we already have 200 units with around 10,000 Sari Sari stores. This will already deliver for us around $900,000 in revenue by the end of 2011. Our goal is to reach 2,000 units, 100,000 Sari Sari stores, and become nationwide by 2015. Now that might seem like a big number, and that might seem like, oh, that's, that's how, how's he gonna do it? Well, I'll share with you our secret sauce. As I mentioned, well, it's a secret, so please keep it in this room. <laughs> okay, so we have 800,000 Sari Sari stores nationwide. Now, I mentioned CARD. Now, this is a very critical piece of our program. CARD, as I mentioned, is the largest microfinance institution in the Philippines. They have 1.4 million clients. They believe in Happinoy so much that they've been with us from the very beginning and have actively already invested. Now, as we speak, CARD already has 200,000 Sari Sari stores. And then our job, really, in the next five years, is to convert 50% of that into Happinoy. So it doesn't seem so far-fetched now, doesn't it? So I've talked about already how to create the Happinoy store network. The second critical piece is really coursing quality of life goods through this channel. Let me share with you how we do it. So we've got a central distribution warehouse that's already operating. We moved the, uh, this year to a larger one. We have a low-cost hub-and-spoke model. We don't own any trucks. The way we do it is in every geography, every province, we have a hub. And we rent a variable, uh, variable vehicle called a jeepney. So it's also run by a local entrepreneur. So we didn't need to invest in a lot of assets and trucks. We rent them on a daily basis. And the reason we get jeepneys is they're actually cheaper than renting trucks. And they can do, get the job done. So through this network, through this distribution system, we have two kinds of goods, and we've decided to focus specifically on these categories. The first is more, more affordable basic goods, and we've made a strategy shift to focus on Happinoy private label. It's our own brand. And quality of life goods, such as over-the-counter medicine, solar products, I'm interested in a lot of the products that were shown here today, drinking water, even low-cost mobile phones. With our partner Telco, we're bringing in a $12 mobile phone. So Happy Noy Noodles versus the leading brand. So let's call it Brand X. Simple value proposition. It's 20% cheaper to consumers, double the margins for the stores, same quality as value brands. And the reason we can do that is because we don't have to spend so much in advertising. We don't have a lot of overheads. And we get these products from what you would call here as OEM manufacturers. They're private label manufacturers. So we don't own the factories. We just buy from them. The second category, second product, quality of life, say, use the example of over-the-counter medicine. There's just no alternative in that poor rural community. And this is actually how we're doing it now. This little panel, this orange panel, contains around 18 SKUs of over-the-counter medicine. It's a $25 pack. We can easily roll it out. Okay. Let's look at Happinoy Noodles as, as, a, as one product. Let me share with you actually how that margins, how those margins eventually add up. So you've got these different layers converted into dollars. These are the margins at every step in the chain. 
Now, just to summarize, Happy Noy Noodles, 51 cents. Brand X at 61 cents for 20% cheaper. And look at the margins. It's double the margins for our community stores, our wholesalers, and double the margins for us. And right now, we're actually distributing seven other kinds of Happy Noy brands. And the Happy Noy Noodles at 15% margin is the lowest. Factor in as well the quality of life products, which have less volume, higher value, but also better margins. For the financials I share later, we're using the noodles. So we try to take a, very, uh, a more conservative approach. So this is how it adds up. How each unit of Happy Noy community stores, wholesalers, and Sari Sari stores, and their sales vis-a-vis -vis the products at their margins. This is our fourth year in operation. Uh, so it doesn't look quite uh, quite like a hockey stick, because, uh, yeah, the first couple of years show that. But we project to be cash flow positive right after 2013. And just to highlight the key assumptions here, is that beginning 2012, our margins will now be 15%, and through scale, we'll get 16%, then 17%. Our cost of delivery is an actual number at 13%, and we're just projecting that we will become more efficient beginning 2013, and chop off one more percent. The net income is 1% 2014, 2% 2015. Uh, we're in the distribution business, it's really low margin. And we benchmark that with an FMCG distributor, which is a fast-moving consumer goods distributor, which is actually doing around 1.5 to 2%. So we're in pretty good shape. We're looking at 400,000 in equity for, to carry us between 2011 to 2012, and after which we raise another round of 300,000 in debt. So that's a total of $700,000. The $300,000 should kick in at around 2013. And where this money goes into is really replication and scale of more units, as well as to invest in organizational depth. We need to hire more people in brand management, supply chain, and field sales. But the investment isn't just going into this distribution system. It's going into 2,000 Happy Noy wholesalers empowered entrepreneurs, and I really want to share the story of Susan. Now, I visited her one year ago with a, an American visitor, his name was Sean, and as we were about to leave her store, Sean said, Susan, keep in touch. And, you know, we say that because it's polite. And Susan brings out something and says, yes, Sean, contact me. And she gave a calling card, and it's not part of her benefits to give calling cards, by the way, but she actually produced her calling card. And you can't see it, but the calling card she produced, it says there, Susan Dino, entrepreneur. That's amazing. That's amazing. The investment also goes into 100,000 Sari Sari stores supported. And we do a lot of uh, interaction with the store owners. And they feel as if they own a piece of McDonald's because they're part of a branded network. They love that idea. In fact, well, it's Jollibee, the Filipino counterpart. But they say that. It's different when they feel part of a large family and that also their incomes are increasing because they've got these cheaper alternatives as well as quality of life goods. Each Sari Sari store reaches 50 people, that's 10 families times five, and that's why we're looking at five million people, poor people reached by this network. But aside from that, we've got upsides. Happy Noy can also be seen as a media and information channel. We don't distribute Coke, but we have a partnership with them Services. We are actually starting to do remittance business with the uh, largest telco, mobile money transfer, and also have a partnership with Sean Frayne earlier, and we're trying the battery rental system. Community-based products is very important as well. The products that the communities make, we want to course through the system, as well as the fact that this idea can go global in emerging markets. This is the team that's going to make this happen. And we've got a strong execu executive team and board. That's my co-founder, Bam. He came from government. I came from manufacturing. Erica has a good background in social development. So we've got a pretty tight executive team. Our board of directors represent very strong industries, and they've got deep expertise uh, from the NGO sector and corporate foundations. The CEO of CARD is in our board. And Manny De Luna, uh, our board member, it's distribution and marketing, and yes, he did come from Coca-Cola and had 15 years experience. But we've also got a management layer in, pl in place. We've got them in four key divisions to make this work. Expansion, 
supply chain, the distribution, marketing, and sales. And so this team is very committed to fulfill this vision, to empower Sari Sari store owners to better serve poor communities, and I hope you'll all join us in this. Thank you very much.